This episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can review cruise prices using easy to use cruise search. You can check out all kinds of different sites and best of all, you can set a price alert. Hey cruisers, welcome to our tour of Grand Princess. We will show you most public areas of Grand Princess starting from deck five and working our way up to deck 17. Starting aft on the plaza deck is the Michelangelo dining room. This is the first of three dining rooms on board. All are similar, but the art on the walls and the carpet variations can help you easily distinguish them. On our 10 night sailing to Alaska, Michelangelo was used for anytime dining between the hours of 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Just outside of the Michelangelo dining room is the piazza. This is often a hub of activity. The piazza offers quick access to many notable areas on the ship, as you'll see shortly. During the day, this central spot is bustling with activities, music, and cooking demos. And in the evenings, when the bars are busy and cruisers are heading to dinner, it's a great place to meet up with friends and catch live music performances. The centrally located Bar Piazza always draws a crowd and offers drinks and ocean views. The International Cafe is open 24 hours a day and offers a variety of food items which change throughout the day and evening. In the morning, you can expect an excellent selection of pastries and coffee, espresso, and specialty teas for a charge. During the lunch and dinner hours, hot soup, paninis, quality desserts, and many different choices of salads and sandwiches are not to be missed. Just adjacent to the International Cafe, you'll find the onboard art gallery, which on our sailing had hours that varied by day. Also on Deck 5, you'll find Alfredo's Pizzeria, where the friendly staff serves several varieties of pizza with a complement of wine and beer options. Vines Bar is one of my favorite spots on board. The decor is reminiscent of a wine cellar, and the special events are worth watching for in your princess patter. From wine and chocolate tasting, to complimentary tapas and wine flights, this is an inviting spot to spend part of your afternoon or evening. The Internet Cafe is a light and bright place to catch up on emails or check in for that flight home. Sounds depressing to me, but this was a busy spot on our cruise. Of course, you can always browse Princess's website for free if you're itching to research your next cruise on board. While the Internet Cafe is usually open 24 hours a day, the Digital Communications Manager works limited daytime hours. If you need help with the computers here, or with using the Princess at Sea app, check your patter for more information on when the manager is on hand. Moving up to Deck 6, Botticelli Dining Room is located aft and is the second of three dining rooms on board. On our sailing, Botticelli was used for two traditional dining seatings. The first at 5.30 p.m and the second at 7.45 p.m. Windows on both sides of this venue keep it light and warm, and it's a lovely place to watch the sea as you dine. There are a wide variety of tables in all dining rooms, from large rounds for groups to intimate tables for two. 
The third dining venue on board, Da Vinci, is also located on deck six. As you'll notice, the decor and layout are quite similar across the three. On our sailing, Da Vinci was used for a hybrid of early seating dining and anytime dining. The early seating was at 5.30 p.m. and anytime dining followed from 7.45 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Da Vinci also hosted breakfast hours from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., lunch from about noon to 1.30 p.m., and afternoon tea from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m., most days of the cruise. The shops are laid out nicely on decks 6 and 7 and are generally uncrowded. You'll find everything from Stanley the Bear to apparel and souvenirs, jewelry and watches, cosmetics and fragrance, and the well-known Effie store which hosts events throughout the cruise. Located between the casino and shops, guest services on deck six is the spot to head for general hotel-related questions. They're delighted to help. Heading forward on deck six, the casino on Grand Princess is large and well laid out. As you move forward toward the Princess Theater, you'll find Snooker's Cigar Bar with rich wood decor and a pool table on the ceiling. This spot is often overlooked by passengers. The Princess Theater sits at the front of the ship on decks six and seven. It's always showtime here from the Grand Princess singers, dancers, and orchestra to vocalists and magicians. By day, port and shopping talks and even movies can be found in this expansive spot. Heading all the way aft on deck seven, it's the second stage venue on board, Vista Lounge. You'll enjoy morning Zumba, line dancing, trivia, and bingo here by day, and music and comedy in the evening hours. Meet the newly renovated Sabatini's restaurant, where you'll find Italian cuisine with an open kitchen for an upcharge. The restaurant has been entirely modernized and this was a very popular spot on our cruise. Just outside Sabatini's on deck 7 aft, you'll find the photography and video gallery. You can browse your photos, set up an appointment with the Platinum Studio, or pick up a GoPro or some extra SD cards with the help of the photo staff. Also on the promenade deck, you'll find the popular Wheelhouse Bar. Watch for live music and afternoon two-for-one happy hours in this venue.
Explorer's Lounge plays host to lots of activity on board. On our sailing, the Champagne Art Preview and Auction were held here, as well as seminars, Discovery at Sea trivia, live music, and dancing. There's lots of cozy seating if you just want to grab a drink and catch up with cruise companions. Crooner's Bar is a popular spot to enjoy piano, vocal, and other musical entertainment in the evening, or a view of the promenade deck by day. The future crews and Princess Captain Circle desks are located near the Crown Grill and are a bit tricky to find without knowing where to look. At the Leaves Tea Lounge and Library, you'll often see cruisers enjoying a board game or quietly reading a book. Crown Grill, the elegant onboard steakhouse, is located forward on Deck 7. The venue is quite large and offers a combination of booth and table seating. The open kitchen provides a nice peek into the preparation process. Just outside Crown Grill, you'll find the Shore Excursions desk, laid out nicely with plenty of room to browse brochures and relax while you decide what activities appeal to you. Now to the top decks for a look at the public areas and pools. The terrace pool, located on deck 12 aft, is for adults only and overlooks the wake. And this is one of my favorite spots on board and offers some of the most dramatic views on the ship. The aft alfresco's bar on deck 14 also shares a wake view and is usually one of the more quiet places to grab a drink on board. Horizon Court, the onboard buffet, was recently refreshed with new seating, carpet, and hand washing stations. You'll find this spot on deck 14 aft on both sides of the Lido deck. If you're hanging out poolside, the Calypso Bar in the covered pool area is super convenient. And speaking of covered pools, this is the Calypso Reef Pool. It has two hot tubs and this beautiful pool, heated of course. The Princess's covered pools remain one of my favorite features of this class of ship and offer a great opportunity to swim and soak on chilly days to Alaska. 
Neat Coffee and Cones, the new poolside ice cream and coffee spot. You can grab a complimentary soft serve here, or ice cream sandwiches, espresso drinks, and milkshakes for a small upcharge. We think this venue works well, but wish that the espresso bar was open during the morning hours. On the other side of Coffee and Cones is Neptune's Reef and Pool Area. Much like the Calypso Pool Area, there are two hot tubs and a terrific pool. This area is not covered, but it does offer quick access to drinks and snacks, as you'll see next. Prego Pizzeria satisfies poolside pizza cravings, and the staff is happy to offer you a second slice with a smile. The Mermaid's Tail Bar is poolside. If you're not in a pizza kind of mood, swing by the Trident Grill for hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, french fries, and more. Ah, the 1-5 Lounge and Nightclub. Perched on Deck 15, this spot offers views for days and a remodeled, modern decor. From glacier viewing to late night dancing, this is a cool spot with lots of uses. Hearts and Minds, the onboard chapel, is flooded with natural light and offers plenty of space for your onboard wedding or vow renewal. The Sea Breeze Bar on Deck 15 is a great spot to catch views of both Movies Under the Stars and the passing scenery. This was a popular spot on our cruise, from sail away to sea days. Perhaps one of the most striking of the recent renovations on Grand Princess is with the Camp Discovery Youth Center concept. First, a look at the treehouse for three to seven-year-olds. We loved the inviting, outdoor-focused theme here. Next, the Lodge, for bigger kids aged 8 to 12. The youth team in the Lodge leads fun activities like Wii Bowling, T-shirt coloring, Discovery at Sea Trivia, pizza parties, and Animal Planet Petucation. I was pretty jealous I couldn't hang out and play Ski Ball and Foosball, but oh well. The Beach House for teens aged 13 to 17 offers a chill, beach lounge vibe. Just forward from the youth area, the Lotus Spa salon, and fitness center occupy the forward portion of the ship. The salon offers haircuts, styling, and even shaves for men.
The fitness center is large and has some of the most dramatic views on board. Lots of free weights and cardio equipment with a view flank the windows, while other Nautilus machines and a spin and group exercise studio are found in the center. The adults-only spa pool is located just off the spa, beneath the sanctuary, and is a great alternative when the main pools are more crowded. Now for a spot that made my list of top 5 favorite spots on board this ship, the aft hot tubs. This spot speaks for itself. Situated conveniently close to the hot tubs is the Oasis Bar. If you study your deck plans carefully, you might just find the mini golf area. The design is smart, and while it isn't completely wind-free, you can see it was designed to be somewhat protected from the high deck winds. The adults-only sanctuary is one of Grand Princess's best-kept secrets. Located on deck 16, this pocket of tranquility has limited space available. At our sailing time, passes were $20 for a half day or $40 for a full day. Be sure to check into this amenity on day one for gorgeous forward views and unbeatable peace and quiet. Let's jump from deck 16 to 17 and check out the sports court. Not only can you shoot hoops up here, but you can escape the crowds on glacier days for some incredible views. Thanks for joining us on this tour of Grand Princess. Be sure to check out our daily vlogs from this voyage to Alaska in the description box below. Subscribe to our channel and follow Cruise Tips TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll be sure to share photos, cruise news, giveaways, and updates on our travels. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Hey, click me to subscribe.